Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Thursday, August the 29th, 2024. Thursday, August the 29th. Not a huge day, typical Thursday, okay? We've got um, Drew giving a speech, you know, thank you all for, you know, supporting him and blah, blah, blah in the park. Congressman McAuley was supposed to show up and he didn't. Um, Michael, Willow, Curtis, Portia, and a bunch of uh, uh, extras, because we didn't know everybody else there. Um, we're here for Drew. And Portia, after it's over, they congratulate Drew. Portia says, oh, she sneaks away to make a phone call. And she goes, do you have Heather Weber's lab results? That's who she's, you know, talking to on the phone. And Curtis is like, why are you asking about Heather? Now, mind you, this is a doctor on the phone. And you're going to interrupt my conversation and ask me, why am I checking on a hospital matter? Right? So Portia, I guess the person finished telling her whatever and she hangs up and she uh, she goes, Heather Weber, it's Heather Weber. She was transferred last night for some lab results. And he goes, oh, oh okay, you know what? I, I forget, you know, you can't divulge patient information. She says, no, I can't. But she's just there for lab results. That's about as much as I could tell you. And he goes, oh, okay. And then they had some other conversation. I fast forwarded past that because I, I could care less, right? So Michael has to leave after Drew makes his speech and get this, get, get what the reason is. Now, mind you, tonight is the big fancy quarter main dinner, the big dress up fancy dinner. That came fast, right? But he says, listen, I have to go. I have to take Monica to one of her scheduled doctor's appointments. Isn't that what Yuri is for? Yuri takes Monica to her scheduled doctor's appointment, drives her everywhere she needs to go. But Michael is taking her. And I thought, oh, okay. This is how they're going to leave Willow there with Drew. Sure enough, that's how, that's exactly what happened. See, Drew gave Drew this big shout out about how she was his number one supporter. You know, she was very instrumental in him actually taking up this mantle and she sits standing there next to Michael. And then he says, oh, and of course, you know, my nephew, Michael Corinthos, for also assisting with whatever he said. And Michael just kind of shakes his head. But anyway, oh, and when Michael left, you didn't have to say those things about me. He said, it's true, Willow. Oh, but still, you know, still, okay. You know, all right. So Drew gets the call and I mean, and then Willow, he tells Willow, can we talk about this somewhere else? Because he tells her the congressman died. So she goes, of course, of course. So they go, let me see what my pictures are. There's Willow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. They go to Drew's office. And they talk about it. And he tells her the whole story, how he was so, the congressman and his wife, we're on at the airport in DC getting ready to come here, you know, for Drew's acceptance speech. And he collapsed at the airport. They rushed him to the hospital and he passed away there suddenly. So he goes, Oh, goodness, look, I'm keeping you from the big quarter main dinner. You go ahead and go. She goes, Well, wait, you're supposed to be there too. He says, Oh, I don't feel like being around family, you know. And I thought, well, then go to your doggone room, right? That's what you do. 
So Willow says, no, I'm not going to leave you alone in this condition. Drew did not look broke up, right? He did not look like he needed to lay his head in her lap as she stroked the back. He was nowhere near that. I'm not going to leave here until I know you. I'm going to call Michael. Now, you're quitting your job so that you won't be around this man. Yet you're taking every opportunity, even after that, walking contradiction. That's all she is, is a walking contradiction. And boy, when it comes out, and I do believe because all the kids are there, right? All the kids are there. Now, they didn't say if James was going to be there tonight. I don't know. But anyway, uh, the conversation with them got left right there. You know, we'll see. But you know, guess what? She is going to stay with him. Period. And there's no reason. She can't see the logic in that being wrong. And I'm sorry, Drew. Who in the heck introduced you to the congressman anyway? Who knew the congressman ever since she was a little girl? And that would be Nina. So when you heard that the congressman died, your next phone call should have been to Nina, breaking the news to her, period. But see, Drew knows exactly what he's doing. He is underhandedly really willows, willing, naive, want to be able to deny self in on purpose, a hundred percent on purpose. Nina would have come over there in a heartbeat and been withdrew. I just shook my head. Everybody shook my head, right? Now, ridiculous. Okay, Dante, let's go to that. Dante's talking to uh, Olivia about how he shouldn't have left. And of course, her being his mama, you had no choice. You did what you felt you had to, this, that, and the other, yada, yada, yada. Whatever. Carly shows up because it's a family dinner. They wanted her to bring Donna and Monica wanted Carly there. So she's trying to make small talk with Dante. How you doing, Dante? Is everything? And he was just cutthroaty to her. And she's kind of taking some of those hits with a grain of salt. And then finally she goes, uh, Dante, what is going on? Because he goes, as if you were ever really concerned about Lulu. He goes, I am. She says, I am concerned about Lulu. She's my family. He goes, oh, oh, now you think she's your family. But when you pay Brooklyn to break me and Lulu up, you didn't think she about her as being your family? And she goes, wait, you're bringing that up? That was so long ago. And you know what? I was definitely wrong in doing that. And I apologized. I thought everything was okay i've moved on which to me was kind of the wrong thing to say that yeah i did some dirt i tried to break you guys up but you guys didn't break up right i apologized i moved on and he goes yeah it's easy for you to move on it's easy for you to take a wrecking ball to somebody's relationship and then just move on and carly's like it's not like that dante and you know it it took years for me and Lulu to finally get back on good terms. And it did. Lulu and Carly were not best friends, but they weren't best friends before when she was paying Brooklyn, right? Lulu was Luke's daughter. Carly was Luke's sister. No, no, no. His niece, Barbara Jean's sister. So they were cousins, whatever, right? But they had moved past it for sure. Lulu had look, Dante was just gone so long, he don't know, right? There we go. And there goes some of that guilt. You don't know that when you were gone, 
Lulu's devastated. She and Carly mend some fences, but brother, that's what happened there. So Carly's just, you know, she ain't gonna take no guff, but Dante ended up, you know, kind of letting it go because it was ridiculous. So now we have Kate's is Alexis is in there still with Kate's and Christina. And or no, he waited for Alexis to be gone. He brought Christina down to the precinct. And she goes, uh, you're not supposed to question me without my lawyer presence. And he goes, then you could sit here and wait and think about why you're here until your lawyer gets here. She goes, that's the thing. I don't know why I'm here. And he goes, oh, so what is it? Do you want to wait or do you want to talk to me and find out why you're here? So he takes her into the interrogation room and Dex is just looking at this whole exchange of what Kate's is doing, right? And Kate's has an FBI agent with him. And he tells her that's because I'm amending the charges. She goes, what do you mean? You've already charged me. No, I am adding manslaughter for the death of Irene Davis Asford. And she says, what? Yeah, by you trying to attack Ava. She goes, that's not what happened. And you were so out of control, your baby died because of your actions. She goes, that is not. And so as she's saying this, Alexis comes in and she goes, what are you doing talking to my client without me? And she goes, He's trying to say that I'm responsible. She goes, Christina, Christina, don't say anything. Nothing. And she's like, she goes, why have you brought my client in here? He says, well, I brought your daughter in here because I'm adding an additional charge. That's manslaughter for the death of I Irene davis ashford and she says uh wait a no that would not be a federal crime even if you could add it he says well since it happened in conjunction with her trying to uh kill murder a fbi witness yes i can add it to it and alexis says you know what you are really weaving yourself into a hole, Detect, uh, uh, Agent Kate. She says, wait a minute, I'll be back. She goes, Christina, I will be right back. And while I'm gone, don't say anything to him. Do you understand me? And she looks at Kate, she goes, my client is not to talk to you without me present. And so, well, before she does that, she tells him, I need to speak to my client. It's time for you to go. Well, Kate gets a phone call and it's from Sonny, so he jumps up out of there anyway, right? And his officer goes with him. But this is when Alexis got back. Because see, what was that the phone call was from Sonny. What happened is when Alexis left earlier, and actually she told the desk sergeant, Put Cadet Heller in the room to protect my daughter's rights. And I, my daughter is not to speak to anyone without me being present. So Alexis goes to Sonny and do you know she tells Sonny, you go, you give Kate whatever he wants. You sacrifice yourself for our daughter. This is all because of you. This is all happening because of you. You need to take responsibility. You need to protect Christina. He goes, Christina, he goes, Christina is a lot stronger than you think, Alexis. No, 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 she is not. We will lose her. She will crumble. She will not recover. He goes, for one thing, you and Diane will be able to get her off of these charges. She needs to, some relief tonight. And I'm thinking, if you go do your job, Alexis, get her arraigned get her home but see this is why alexis should not be christina's attorney i don't know why they're writing it this way period 
Diane should be the attorney. Even if they're going to have two, Diane should be first chair. Diane would have acted with a cooler head. Diane never would have went to Sonny, ever, and said, turn yourself in. Because, see, they would have known that wouldn't stop Kate's. That wouldn't stop Kate's at all. So when Sonny calls Kate and he goes, oh, I figured this would be about your daughter's latest charges. And Sonny says, all right. He goes, you win. I'll do it. And he, John stiffens up. You'll do what? He goes, I will give you everything you want. Okay, I'm coming to your penthouse to arrest you right now. And Sonny says, nope, I'm getting ready to go to the Quartermains because my sons are there. And I'm going to say goodbye to my sons. And then I'm going to come to the precinct. He goes, oh, I'm going to save you the trouble. I'm going to come to the Quartermain house and arrest you in front of them. See, what? Right? Okay. And I'm thinking just the way Sonny is doing that, I think it's a trap. I think it's the trap for Kate, right? But before Alexis got back into the room, right? He was just brow beating Christina saying, she goes, why are you doing this to me? He goes, oh, I'm not doing this to you. Your father's doing this to you. This is all because of your father and your father doesn't care a thing about you. He's letting this all happen. So in other words, the charges are all trumped up, right? Because this is supposed to be about manslaughter, right? This is supposed to be about her attacking Ava. But he said, no, your father. All he has to do is, is confess. And this would all be over for you. And so she's like breaking down. Why are you doing this? She puts her head down and he goes, look. I'll give you a bone. Do you have any knowledge of any crimes your father has committed? You can save yourself. You tell me, right? And Christina slowly looked up and I said, uh-oh, Cujo, <laughs> right? She looked at him. She says, you got it all wrong, Jagger. She was channeling Sonny. She says, I'm not about to give you anything on my father. Because see, what you are doing to me, that is, what did she say, illegal? And what did she say about uh, uh, incorrupt use of his back? Oh, she read him the riot act. She says, and when the judge hears about no jury or judge is going to let these charges that I killed my baby stand, because that is not what happened. But you, you are going to get what's coming to you, you son of a. And he's looking at her because, oh, he thought he had her broken down when she crying with her head down. And so he says, there she is. This is who entered Ava Jerome's hotel room. There you are. And Christina just, she goes, I'm just telling you the facts. And then she thought, she said some other choice things to him, right? And she just leaning back and he goes, you better watch who you're talking to. You're talking to a federal. She goes, no, I, I don't see no federal agent here. A federal agent wouldn't do this at all. This is, this is abuse of your badge. And so that's when Alexis comes in. What are you doing in here talking to my daughter? 
And she goes, oh, hi, mom. He was trying to get me to give up information on dad telling me that it, I could save myself. And Alexis looked at him and he looked at her and then his phone rang. So he jumped and he ran out, right? That That's when it was sunny and they made these arrangements. And so Alexis looked at her and she goes, uh, how are you doing? It looks like you're feeling better. And she goes, oh, I am. I'm not about to let Agent Kate, or she may have even said Jagger, like Sonny did, get the best of me. And Alexis just looked at her and see, and I thought, see, see Alexis? That's what Sonny was telling you. That Christina is stronger than you think. But you're so busy being, oh, my mother, oh, she was crying. And I'm having to hug my daughter. Oh, no, 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 my daughter. But instead of shoring her up so she can handle this kind of, because you, you're the one chick that left her there with Jagger there to go run off. Should have never left her there. You know, Jagger don't play by the rules, right? But oh, you had to get Sunny. You know what? I don't care about your life. We got to save my daughter's life because this is all your fault. When actually, no, this right here, what's happening to Christina is not Sonny's fault at all, right? It's Ava's fault for trying to make her testify against Sonny in a custody hearing, but it's not Ava's, Ava didn't push her out the window. It's Christina's fault for going over to the hotel room but Christina didn't try to attack Ava. The accident got out of control. It happened because things got out of control. That's what happened. And Kate's is making Ava lie. Somehow Ava is going to play a very important part in clearing up that lie. That's that's my, my thing is I really believe Ava is going to clear up the lie. Ava's going to end up coming through. Ava and Sunny, she's going to make some kind of deal with something's going to happen, right? Some kind of deal is going to be made. So that's it, everybody. That's all that happened today. Let's go to comment corner, comment corner. I'm starting from the bottom to the top. Let me do my trusty, dusty stop timer for 10 minutes. Here we go. We have Monique says jason gave christina good advice don't let kate get to you be calm don't react christina still reacts excuse me y'all brenda says christina ain't gonna listen no she doesn't she feels like she can handle her dad's business sit yourself down and then lucy says to brenda christina corinthos davis never listen to anyone she needs a complete mental evaluation um, by a trained professional, especially now with postpartum depression, which could lead to all to all out depression with consequences. That is so true. I am says Laura is using the mayoral mayor mayoral. Oh my goodness, you know what I mean, y'all. Office as her personal resource. Laura and Kevin don't give off mercenary. Don't give off mercenary. Save the day look. No, they don't. They don't look like we coming in, getting my son out of there. Um, and then DB says, hey, and Anna shaking my head. Her and Anna shaking my head. I am says to DB, um, right there. They are giving strong woman a bad rap. Anna is so in love with the very man she hated a few for years. Uh, she can't see the forest for the trees. Laura should have asked Jason to bring Lucky back. Uh, I don't know that Jason would have left right now. Uh, not for Laura. Enough stuff's going on here in town. Denzel, I'm going to read a couple paragraph, uh, paragraphs from Denzel. Denzel says, uh, here goes Christina again, talking about 
she shouldn't had ever went up approaching Ava. Uh, well, no duh. It was her fault. It was your fault that the baby is dead. And then saying her baby, this baby, that blah, blah, blah. She can't even take no responsibility for her actions. And here comes Alexis Cotling, Christina, like she is a baby, agreeing with her and knowing Christina was wrong and everything she was saying. Yes, the baby was Christina's by blood, but it was TJ and Molly's baby, in my humble opinion. And next, Alexis needs to stop being uh, on Christina's side every time because Christina isn't the only daughter, uh, you know, She's also got two more daughters, Sam and Molly. You know, I can't understand. I can understand Sonny because he's always going to side with his daughter because Molly isn't Sonny's dead, just her uncle, dad, just her uncle. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you, Denzel, for that. And then let's go up to Dacia says, I hear rumors that Esme might come back to GH next month. She'll definitely get her baby. And Lucy says to Dacia, wow, my sister and brother-in-law really liked Esme. Well, look, Esme might come back, but um, Nicholas Chavez isn't. So let's see if they recast Spencer. Rosebud says Ava found a burner phone. That's right. It was a burner phone with a wad of cash thank you rosebud i like what is that she found something in that else in the purse um lisa said john keeps making promises to ava that she is safe he claims that he checked on avery he hasn't seen avery i know this lady watching ava is not an fbi agent she is a mobster ava's trying to get this woman to talk the woman is going to leave her alone in the room John is pulling a fast one over on Ava. She should have listened to Sonny. Kate is, pull, is pushing his luck. He is telling Sonny uh, when to meet him and where. Um, her needs to take, she needs to take Diane with him. Uh, why does Christina think it's her fault? And everybody go back and read the rest of Lisa's comment. Lucy says, that agent guard, hmm. And then Lisa also says the doctor will show up and go to Brennan to help Lucky get free from whoever is holding him. Why does Laura not think she needs mercenaries? She thinks she and Kevin are going to have tea and talk about getting Lucky or about letting Lucky go free. Stupid thinking. That is so true. But that's Laura. That is definitely Laura. Only her and Luke could do stuff like that. Lucy says, I like how Dex Heller counseled Molly through her sibling mommy issues. He missed his calling. Should have been a psychiatrist, not a cop, LOL. When will we learn more about Dex? I know, hello there, says, I'm wondering if Rick could be Dex's father. So when Molly and Dex would be half siblings, now that could be. Although he said his father was abused, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe his father was more abusive to him because it wasn't his kid. They'd have to really write that story. Lucy says to hello there. That's an interesting theory. Dex mentioned his father beat his mother. I could see Rick doing that. I am says, nah, Rick isn't Dex's dad. Dex has brothers. Rick is all kinds of slime. Dex has brothers, but that doesn't mean they're full brothers of his. But Dex was the youngest. They were older than him. So yeah, that won't work. Uh, Lucy says that I am right. So Rick could be Dex's slime bag father that beat Dex's mother. No, Dex's siblings could be from another father. Medora says, but I think Dex's father was not the man he grew up with. I don't know. Lucy says to Medora, that's right, Dex left home. Well, Dex left home after high school as soon as he turned 18. Lucy says, Dex could be Jagger's son. You know, Dagger. Um, nah, I don't think so. And then we have, let me go up some more. We have Linda. Linda says, Sonny is right. 
They are about to kill Ava and frame him for it. Lashanta says, Rick kidnapped Carly from the church. Jason and Courtney's wedding. Wow. Michael was distraught and stopped talking. He took her to hide in Elizabeth's, you mean hide in Elizabeth's house. Carly was in the panic room, chained to a wall. That was Cameron, Cameron Braun playing Charlie. Carly, uh, he was going to steal her and Sonny's baby and give it to Elizabeth. He was giving Elizabeth hormone pills to keep her from getting pregnant. I think he was drugging her lemonade, but one day she was playing with the remote and opened the door and saw Carly. Yeah, that is true. Vector, call 911. And then Brenda says, Christina uh, ain't going to listen. She feels like she can handle this herself. And N Nataku says, hard to believe how they messed with Jagger's character. I liked him back in the day. I don't understand um, that he was recast at, and at first I liked him, but now this way is beyond obsession. Uh, yeah, there was still a riff with the original actor playing Jagger, uh, bad blood between him and General Hospital writers, but guess what? He never would have played this, thank God. The other actor, this does not even protect the integrity and the personality and the man Jagger was. This is such ridiculous writing. Ridiculous. I can't stand. I can't stand it. And then we have Aisha says, Kate is overlooking the, the minor point, in this case against Christina isn't even going to be officially brought before a judge until he produces evidence of a case that he's investigating into Sonny. If such case exists, as he claims, then he would have no trouble producing the case files, uh, complete with the case number and case notes. Instead of uh, filling, fulfilling the judge's request, not to mention giving the prosecutor something to work with for a change he produces Ava's statement an obvious attempt by case to beef up his claim which is true because didn't the judge only give him 48 hours 48 hours to bring forth that Ava is actually involved in any kind of official case going on that is 100 percent correct so that 48 hours should have been gone. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's it for Comment Corners, everybody. Comment Corner. I'll be back tomorrow with another daily recap of General Hospital.